Thank you for everyone uh, for joining. I am Charmaine Clark with the Office of Community Development, um, Community Liaison. Um, thank you everyone for uh, joining us on this Zoom training. Uh, we will be uh, talking about the Safeguarding Your Neighborhoods, uh, the Project Safe uh, Neighborhoods Program, which will be conducted by the Columbia Police Department. I uh, want to acknowledge uh, our director, uh, Gloria Saeed, who is the director of Office of Community Development. I have my colleague, Valerie Austin, that is uh, on this um, Zoom as well. So we will get started. Uh, we have Sergeant Moody, uh, who is with the Columbia Police Department, as well as Mar Marcia Noble. Uh, she is the ceasefire coordinator. And we are about to get started with this training. Uh, Sergeant Moody, you may take it over. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Again, my name is Sergeant Moody with uh, Columbia Police Department. I'm over the Crime Gun Intelligence Unit here. Um, it's been a unit that started uh, last year. Uh, I just got added on to the unit um, about four months ago. Some of you I know from working uh, the community response team and some other projects up around the North Columbia area. So uh, happy to be here and happy to present this information. Um, Ms., uh, like like uh, Ms. Clark said, Ms. Nobles here is beside me. I'll let her introduce herself real quick. Hi, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I go by Jan Nobles. I am the ceasefire coordinator here with the Columbia Police Department. Um, this is a new position for me as well. I started in October of 2020. Um, before that, I spent eight years as a victim's advocate with the Columbia Police Department and about seven years before that as a victim's advocate with the Richland County Solicitor's Office. Um, so I may look familiar to some of you as well due to those reasons. Thank you for having us. We want to go ahead, we can go ahead and get the PowerPoint up. Good. Uh, like I said, we've, we've been brought here to talk about Project Safe Neighborhood and to share, share with everybody the strategies Columbia Police Department is using to make our community safer. Uh, Columbia, unfortunately, has a share of crime, including violent crime and gun crime. Um, community safety is not just a law enforcement issue. Uh, we must have help and support from the community. That's why all of y'all are here and to learn about it and to help us out as well. And many of you on today's calls are community stakeholders who may in position to help our efforts. Uh, you can go on to the next uh, slide. Uh, Project Safe Neighborhoods is a uh, proven evidence-based violence reduction strategy that focus law, focuses law enforcement, community, and service providers on individuals who are most likely to commit gun crimes. Um, the foundations for the Department of Justice PSN strategy are uh, three-tiered. It's uh, community-based, it's targeted, and it's comprehensive. Uh, it's community based with each local program is contoured to fit the specific violent crime problems in, uh, in our areas. Uh, it's targeted, it utilizes law enforcement and community intelligence along with cutting edge technology to identify and target the most violent offenders for enforcement action. It's comprehensive uh, due to us. Uh, it directs US attorneys to marry enforcement efforts with support of prevention and re-entry re strategies to truly combat violent crime in a lasting way. Uh, the concept of Project Safe Neighborhoods that many cities across the country have similar crime problems so that if we all collectively share uh, best proven practices, we can adapt and emulate programs that have proven successful in our cities. Um, some of the highlights for the, uh, for the City of Columbia Police Department's program. Uh, with the community, we have several community meetings which uh, I've been a part of uh, and some of y'all have been a part of. Uh, we do home visits with youthful offenders. We do handle with care initiatives, uh, children to uh, where, where uh, like uh, school age children are exposed to crime. We do a handle with care form on scene. We pass those to our uh, school resource officers who get passed to our schools. And so that while they're at school, they can get, um, uh, counseling, uh, they get handled, uh, they can be brought off to the side, checked on uh, during the school year, make sure that everything's okay due to that traumatic experience uh, that they had. 
Uh, we do Project uh, Child Safe, which is the gun lock program where we distribute free gun locks. Uh, we have several gun locks pretty much in every region. And also uh, officers can uh, have a few in their cars and uh, bring them to the community meetings where we can hand those out to people who may need them. Uh, we have Ceasefire Columbia, which uh, Ms. Nobles uh, helps with in our focus det deterrence program that connects with at-risk uh, offenders. Um, our, tar our targeted approach is uh, we use technology, evidence, and intelligence um, to identify offenders who illegally possess and are used firearms. Some of the technology we use a shot spotter, which we've talked about in the past uh, in different things. Uh, we use NIVIN, which is the uh, national database to put shell casings into to identify uh, them different guns and different uh, shell casing from uh, crimes so that crimes can be connected and incidents can be connected. Uh, we have the City of Columbia surveillance camera network uh, that we use on a regular basis when an incident happens, we check on that. Uh, we have license plate readers through the city and um, uh, we do support our local law enforcement intelligent efforts to identify criminal offenders. CPD also has uh, created the Crime Gun Intel Unit, which I am ahead of, to leverage the um, intelligence we create. We do, we host uh, biweekly crime meetings with local uh, law enforcement, area law enforcement uh, personnel, the probation parole, uh, prosecutors, uh, like I said, with uh, Richland County and different things like that. So we can discuss crime trends, crime offenders, and any uh, intelligence that we need to get out so uh, the local law enforcement and uh, we'll know what's going on. And then uh, we do connect with our law enforcement top, uh, partners, uh, covers the comprehensive network. First off, let's get started about uh, ShotSpotter. Some of you may not have heard what ShotSpotter does. Uh, ShotSpotter is a company that describes itself as an advanced system of sensors, algorithms, and artificial intelligence to detect local and alert uh, detect, locate, and alert police to gunfire. Uh, basically how this works is there, we have a lot of sensors through a seven mile uh, area of Columbia, our hardest hit areas for violent crime. And those sensors uh, work with each other once there's a gunshot detected. Uh, it goes through a uh, quick check through a shot spotter alert system. And then we get an alert on um, uh, cell phones. We have an application that officers have on their cell phones that we get an alert that's supposed to come with to us within 30 seconds of the uh, of the shot fired incident. Then that of course gets officers in route to those incidents a lot quicker, and uh, hopefully we're able to catch those uh, those violent offenders uh, in the action uh, by getting there quicker. Um, You can go on to the next one there. The, the mission of the CGIC is to identify, analyze, investigate crime gun intelligence with the goal of producing actionable intelligence to assist in identifying, arresting, and prosecuting offenders who unlawfully possess and or use firearms and identifying illegal sources for crime guns that are being used in uh, Columbia. In January of 2020, uh, last year, the CPD stood up our new uh, crime gun intel unit after receiving uh, federal grants to focus on the offenders, firearms, and locations associated with gun crime. Uh, our crime gun unit uh, is staffed with an inspector, uh, which is Inspector Modzaleski, unfortunately, he couldn't be here today. Uh, Sergeant being me, seven additional sworn and non-sworn investigators, officers, analysts, and we have an explosive, explosive detection canine team. And we also have uh, Ms. Nobles, the ceasefire coordinator. Part of our in team includes an assistant solicitor who has visibility on the cases we develop and the offenders we identify for state uh, prosecution. As stated previously, Columbia, like many cities our size, has a problem with crime to include violent crime and gun crime. And Columbia, like many of these cities, identified a need for crime gun unit to focus on and develop intel on armed offenders, crime guns, and hotspot areas for gun violence. With the ultimate goal of breaking the cycle of gun violence 
uh, getting these firearm offenders off our streets and restoring peace to our challenged neighborhoods. You can go on to the next one. Uh, although our crime gun unit may be new to CPD, the concept has been utilized around the country for the past several years before becoming formalized by the ATF and the DOJ a few years ago. The CPD has was the first department in the state to receive a federal uh, grant and to stand up a dedicated crime gun unit. The Richland County Sheriff's Department has since stood up a NIBIN task force, which, as I said before, we work very well together with, and we share uh, information pretty much daily uh, with them. And the Myrtle Beach Police Department has received their own uh, crime gun unit grant as well this year. As a result of the formalization, uh, DOJ defines seven core processes, which are best practices that all crime gun units should follow. Uh, in the first two steps, uh, after we lawfully take firearms into custody and collected fired cartridge casings um, at crime scenes, we will test fire the NIBIN eligible uh, seized firearms and submit those test fired casings and seized evidence casings to SLED uh, for them to be entered into the uh, NIBIN system. Uh, we also trace the firearms our officers were seizing in um, order to determine where these crime guns were coming from. Uh, in step one, Shot Spotter has uh, significantly improved our ability to get all shooting scenes uh, and improved our ability to render aid to victims, witnesses, and neighborhoods while identifying suspects and uh, collecting ballistic evidence. Crime gun intel analysis, uh, the, uh, we'll, the next slide will give you an overview of what we key on, but our analysis is to develop actionable uh, intelligence that can further an investigation with the goal of identifying armed offenders and getting them off of our streets. Uh, once we are able to charge armed felons, our local and federal uh, prosecutors who are already part of our team, such as the solicitor's office and the U.S. Attorney's Office, all work together to hold these identified offenders accountable. Uh, the crime gun intel analysis, all of our CGIU processes have been formalized into a CPD policy that has been distributed uh, throughout the police department. Steps three and four in the CGIC process, uh, this chart provides our operational flow overview of data intel, our crime gun intelligence focus on, and what we do with it. On the left side of the chart are the core intel sources for our crime gun uh, that our crime gun reviews daily. You got the ballistics evidence, the NIBIN data, which we talked about, the crime gun recovery info, the E-traces, which are uh, what we put the guns in the in a system for the get for the federal government, and it tells us who bought that gun so that we can then uh, talk to those people where the gun's from, uh, if they were stolen, and different things like that. Uh, the CGIC then completes uh, couples this intel with arrests and developments and ongoing investigations as well as shooting incidents, then layers that information with surveillance video and other lawfully obtained information and intelligence that will hopefully help us build this intel into three main categories. Uh, the gun intel, the shooter possessor intel, and shooting locations intel as we try to develop actual leads for follow-up investigations. You go on to the next. So what is Nibin? Uh, Nibin in Laban's terms is like a gun leaving fingerprints on a fired shell casing. Uh, that shell casing, uh, you know, where the firing pin hits the back of the shell casing leaves an identifiable mark that we can test and that we can evaluate and that we can match with other shell cases to tell which guns that uh, that, that shell casing came from and match them to the different scenes. Uh, then we then put those uh, that information into a uh, into the database to where we can match with all over the country. We've gotten hits from uh, shell casings from California, uh, from New, uh, North Carolina, from Georgia, from uh, pretty much all over where we've had uh, where we've had uh, notifications from. You can go on to the next slide. 
Uh, like I said, right there, you have the uh, basic anatomy of a gun. Um, and then you have the shell casing right there and the bullet on the bottom right there uh, with the shell casing, the cartridge casing, the bullet, the gunpowder, and the primer. Like I said, the where the firing pin strikes the primer in the back of the shell casing there leaves an identifiable mark that we are able to, uh, to distinguish. Uh, you can go on to the next slide. Uh, this is just pretty much going over the same thing. Uh, like I said, these are some of the marks that we see on the shell, uh, shell casing that help us identify um, the shell casings uh, from the, from the uh, individual gun. Uh, as I said, uh, these are our core deliverables uh, that, we, uh, that the crime gun unit uh, puts out. The CGI leads that we develop are given a unique um, number. Uh, the tier one leads will be initially referred to the assigned investigator, while tier twos will be assigned to CGIU, uh, my personnel. Tier threes are still provided to assigned officers for intel purposes, um, like multiple shot spotter uh, shooting scenes linked via Niven with no crime gun recovery um, and no victim witnesses or suspects. The uh, crime gun unit will not conduct an independent investigation in tier one leads unless we receive the concurrence uh, of the assigned investigator. So, so basically uh, any kind of uh, crime where a person is hit or something like that, one of our investigators gets put on it, of course, and then those leads that we get from NIBIN go straight to those investigators so that they can develop those leads and uh, hopefully uh, help aid them in their investigations. Um, all gun possession cases reviewed for possible federal adoption. Um, we do have three task force officers that are assigned to the, to the unit and to the department. Um, those task force officers work hand in hand with the ATF. A couple of them are in the ATF's offices. And then one we have on site here at headquarters. Uh, but those TFOs, those task force officers, are able to make uh, federal charges on all of our cases that we bring up for gun-related crime uh, in the uh, federal system. Um, all gun possession cases, uh, if the offender case is federally eligible and it meets the current guidelines, our TFOs will prepare or refer the case through the local ATF office. Uh, the TFO should be communicating um, with the uh, assistant solicitors that we are reviewing their case uh, for possible adoption. And if we are writing the case for federal adoption to ensure that um, we don't take a plea on state or case charges. Um, our violent offenders list is another thing that we put together in the crime gun unit. This is our top 10 offenders in Columbia identified through a documented Intel-based scoring system, uh, represent our priority offenders who are on the street uh, they're not in custody, even, even those with pending charges. The list is uh, posted on the CPD shared drive. Uh, that way all officers, uh, all members of the CPD can uh, get that uh, violent offenders list and is shared uh, through the solicitor's office. This process will be explained uh, later. Uh, this is our process of using Intel to identify our priority gun offenders, uh, communicate it to our stakeholders such as uh, Richland County, PPP and the solicitor's office uh, to be sure these offenders get our focused attention. Since not every gun offender possessor may be a priority case, we want to make sure um, uh, we, everybody knows who really needs our attention. You can go on to the next. Uh, and uh, the, I'll pass it on to Ms. Uh, Nobles to talk about the uh, ceasefire initiative we have. Hey, good afternoon again. Um, so Ceasefire Columbia is um, a part of the Safe Neighborhood Grant that we received. Um, and just to kind of give you guys a little bit of a background, um, criminal justice statistics tell us that a fair percentage of crime, particularly gun and violent crime, is committed by repeat offenders. That same research tells us that when offenders are arrested and convicted of crimes, 70% will reoffend and be rearrested in a couple of years. Um, for the reoffenders, the numbers only go down. 
the numbers are worse for the younger offenders. Um, they have a lack of education, a lack of job training and employment opportunities. They have substance abuse problems. Um, so when these reoffenders are released, they head right back to the same communities. Um, and so that's what we're trying to do is target specific communities with Ceasefire Columbia. So what we do essentially is identify chronic repeat offenders that have not gotten the message. Um, we bring the offenders in for what we call a call-in, um, where they're put on notice by law enforcement that if they reoffend, we will hold them accountable. It is a two-pronged approach. So on one hand, we have law enforcement with the threat of prosecution, and the other prong to that is we introduce them to social service providers on our ceasefire team. Um, these social service providers are comprised of government and nonprofit mm -hmm. organizations who offer help to break the cycle of recidivism by helping them get educated, get clean, get counseling, and get job training. Um, the ultimate goal being to lower recidivism rates that lead to lower crime rates, which leads to safer communities. Um, we can go on to the next slide. This is um, a few pictures of previous ceasefires that we've had, um, and it lists the law enforcement agencies that we partner with, um, as well as some of the service providers we partner with. Um, and just to kind of reiterate again, the goal of Ceasefire Columbia is to deter crime, um, develop and promote community outreach efforts, provide training for participants, and support other gun re reduction strategies. Um, the way to accomplish this goal for us is to continue building relationships and trust between prior offenders and community stakeholders, service providers, and our citizens. Um, the community at large is impacted when offenders choose to reoffend. And so by taking part in crime reduction strategies, you can make a difference in your community. And so that's what we're trying to do is, is bring attention and awareness to these programs so that the general public is aware of what we're trying to do to combat crime in your neighborhood. Thank you. Next slide. Uh, 2020, a year in which we launched our uh, crime gun unit, the COVID-19 pandemic began. Many cities across our country experienced astronomical uh, increases in crime to include violent crime and murders, while Columbia actually had decreases in all of our violent crime. Initial returns on our strategies are encouraging, but there's still uh, a lot of work that uh, needs to be done. As you can see at the bottom of the slide, the Columbia had a 24% uh, percent decrease in murders and about a 2% decrease in aggravated assaults uh, since uh, these initiatives have started. And uh, that, that ends our uh, presentation for you. Um, I don't know if we're opening it up for questions, but we'll be glad to take any if you have any. Uh, thank you, Sergeant Moody and Ms. Nobles. Um, we are open for questions. I think it was um, some real good information um, that was was given um, a little more detailed information to uh, some of our neighborhood leaders and you know that was the goal. So we are opening for questions. Um, if anyone has any questions, would you please uh, state your name, uh, neighborhood that you're representing and you may uh, state your questions, uh, direct your questions to Ms. Nobles and Sergeant Moody. Come on, one question, someone has a question. <laughs> it was real yes, good. This is uh, Wilhelmina Matthias and I do have a question. Okay, Ms. Matthias. Um, and I'm representing uh, College Place Community Council as well as I work in the North Main area. Will we get a copy of those slides or that information that was presented? Okay. Uh, I, can get with, uh, I can get with Sergeant McIntyre um the the uh crt sergeant ryan, ryan mcintyre yes ma'am yeah I'll, I'll get with uh i'll get with mcintyre and uh i'll send him a copy of the slides and then he can send them out to you i'll make sure i 
he marks you down and anybody else who would like a copy of the slide. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Yes, okay. ma'am. Any other questions, comments? In reference in regards to the project safe neighborhoods uh, program. Thank you. Uh, Charmaine. This yes. is Lenora Bell speaking, uh, okay. representing uh, Windermere Springs. Right. And I, I would just like to say thank you to the Columbia Police Department for uh, all of their efforts to uh, uh, keep us safe. These programs seemed uh, very well intentioned and uh, uh, I'm sure they're doing a lot to uh, promote uh, safe neighborhoods. And I really appreciate their efforts. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Well, you know, that was the goal, um, you know, with this presentation. Um, that was the goal for this presentation to give more detailed information um, to the community leaders and neighborhood leaders, um, because we do know um, some of the officers, they'll come out and they'll give brief information of what's going on in your neighborhood. So uh, we want to focus more detail, like she, uh, Ms. Noble talked about the uh, ceasefire. Um, information and how the numbers have, the percentages have been going down since these new uh, programs have been implemented. So we wanted to give people familiar with that so you can share and spread the information to, to the other people in your neighborhoods. Um, if you have any problems, especially with some of the things that are going on now um, in our neighborhoods. So this is very vital and good information. Um, so that was the whole goal and the target for this presentation. So do we have any more questions, comments? Uh, if you do, please state your name, your neighborhood that you're representing, and uh, you can direct them to Ms. Noble and Sergeant Moody if you have any questions or concerns or comments. Owen Watts. <laughs> okay. Well, Sergeant Moody and Ms. Noble, Marcia Noble, thank you very much uh, for your brief um, presentation. Uh, prayerfully and hopefully everyone enjoyed it. Um, if they need to get in contact with y'all, where would you like for them to contact you at? Would you mind giving them that information? Uh, yeah, you can, uh, you can contact me at 803-413-3524. Again, it's 803-413-3524. Or if you want to give me an email, uh, you can email me at erskine.moody at columbiasc.gov. And it's erskine, E-R-S-K-I-N-E dot moody at columbiasc.gov. Okay. Again, thank everyone for joining. I really appreciate it. And hopefully, like I said, once again, um, hopefully you enjoyed this uh, brief presentation. Thank you again for joining us and you will be posted on our next upcoming all access event. Thank you.